Hey guys and welcome to Golden Orb Studios. In this series we'll go through how to go from Mechabricks to Blender to Mixamo and finally into Unreal Engine so you can finally make that LEGO game you've been planning to make. So first off go to Mechabricks, there's a link in the description. Just click on the first link, mechabricks.com and then we want to head over to the workshop. If you want a tutorial on importing assets and buildings and things like that let me know down in the comments. But in this video we'll just be looking at creating characters. So first off go down to the tab in the assets browser and then scroll down until you see the minifigures lower parts and we'll just click on that. Let that load up. Tons of different options. You can scroll through all of these. I'm going to go for the Hobbit or the Rings. I'm just going to do this one. So just click on that and it'll just automatically load into the screen. It'll have the separate parts. And if you want to change the different colors, you can do that as well. And then for the upper part, we just go to upper part and I'm using Lord of the Rings. You can mix and match different ones. I'm just going to keep it in the same. So Lord of the Rings and then I believe it's this one. Hover over this and click the top one and that will allow it to snap to the top. You could just drag it but it's nice and easy when it just snaps to it automatically. And then we want to go to the heads and I'm going to Lord of the Rings and then click the top and I'll do this one. Here we go. And then if you wanted to add hair or helmets, and then all of the hair is in here. And if you click the plus arrow, you can find lots and lots more. I'm just going to go with this one. And I'll change his hair color to match his facial hair. And it's looking pretty good for me. If you want to give any other accessories or anything like beards or backpacks or armor, you can find that here in the accessories. And then if you wanted a cape, you think it would be in here, but it's actually down in textiles. And then you'll find all the cloth, like the tents and capes and all sorts of things. And then you can also choose weapons, and there's all sorts of different weapons you can choose from. I'll just do with that one for now, but you can add those. And then head clothing. And then this is where you'll find helmets and hats and all sorts of things like that. I already have hair, so it won't really work for me to have a hat or anything, but you could just do that. Same as before, as adding hair, click the top, and now he's a cloud trooper. All right, so now that we have our character, we can come up to file. You can save it if you want to keep it. I'm just going to export it, and I like to use OBJ for when I'm exporting to Unreal Engine, because it just has the textures and stuff already. If you do the Blender add-on, it's a lot more complicated to bake everything into one texture. So I just like doing OBJ. If you are planning on just doing Blender animations, you'll want to do the Blender add-on because it makes it much more simple and adds nice materials. If you don't have the Mechabricks add-on, I'll have a link in the description for a video showing you how to install it. But for now, let's just continue with the OBJ. I'm just going to keep the logo on studs unchecked for now. And then I'm just going to click export and then you can see it downloads. So I'm just going to unzip this and then in a new scene in Blender, I'm just going to delete that and then file, import, obj and then downloads and there's mine. Click the obj and import and you'll see that it's pretty big but I just keep it like this because it's easier when exporting and I'll show you why later. First off we need to do some mesh reducing and by doing that just click A and then tab and A again, select everything. And then what you want to do is click three and then merge by distance. You can also just click M and then by distance. And then you can see that we already removed a lot of vertices just from that. And there's no visible difference at all. And then one more thing that we can do is hit F3 and type rise to quads. And then that'll just turn all the triangles to quads, which will save a lot of space. And it'll still look exactly the same. So click A again, click all of that, and just do auto smooth. So that looks a lot better. And then if you go into material, you can see that we have our textures. Now you'll notice if you changed one of these settings, like change this to brown or something like that, like change that to yellow, and then like change the skin to red or whatever. If you export it, you'll be able to kind of see it in the solid view. But when you go to material, it's all gone. And the way to fix that is come up here until you make the crosshair, just drag that across, and then click that and click S, and then N, and then zoom in on that. And starting off with this face, let's just rename this to Lego face. And then 
Let's just make a little bit more room. And we want to bring in a mix and hit that and hit C, or you can just hit color. I like to use shortcuts and then just drag that in. And then we want to get a color ramp, drag that in. So if we want to drag that into the factor, keep the color into the color and then do control shift and then click. And if that doesn't work for you, that's because I'm using the Node Wrangler add-on. It comes with Blender. Just go to Edit, Preferences, and then come to Add-ons and search the Node Wrangler. And then just check that. Make sure your settings are saved. And then once you do Control shift click you'll be able to preview it. It's very useful. And then what we want to do is just mask out where his face is. So we want to make everything that we want to keep the same black. And then things we want to change white. And then we can preview by just changing the color. And once you've adjusted this to be the most black and white contrast you can make. And then do control shift and click on the mix. And if you drag off of the base color, you'll see that the color that you used will be there so you can actually just drag that off and drag that into the color and then let's just drag this back into the base color to control shift on the principal shader and now you can see it's working and if it's still blending weirdly you'll just have to adjust this more and if that still doesn't work you can also do clamp result and if clamp factor isn't ticked then you can clamp that and if that still isn't working then you can duplicate the color ramp node and fine tweak it even more and if that still even isn't working, like you have a super complicated face texture, you could texture paint manually a mask onto it and then use that in the factor. But for most cases, this should work and you'll be able to get the custom skin color that you wanted. So now it's Thanos. Gone. Reduced it. And then that's the same setup for all the rest of them. I'll just show you real quick. So go into the material, shift A, you want to do a mix and then hit that, go to color, or you can hit C, and then drag that in, and then we wanna get a color ramp, and then put that in the factor, color into the factor, and then just quickly drag that off and drag that color into there, cause that's the color that was used in here. And then just clamp the result, and then just drag the result into the base color, and then do control shift. Gone. Reduced it. So that it knows where so that it knows where the difference is. All right, I know you can see that this line is yellow, and if you don't want that to be yellow, this is one of the cases where you need to texture paint. What we need to do is just click on the limb that you want to mask, and then do Control Tab, and then you can go to Texture Paint, or you can just come up here and go to Texture Paint. Make sure that it is selected while you do that, and then come up here to the tool, and let's just create a new base color. And we're just gonna call this Leg Mask. And I'm just going to keep alpha unticked and I want the default to be white and then just take this and drag it out and I'm just going to plug it into the bottom color and the factor. That way we can see what we're doing. I'm going to make sure I'm on black and now wherever you paint you can see that it's going to show up. So you can just make a rough painting and go back to object mode and select that and do control I and H just to hide that to make it easier. Control tab and texture paint and then continue and continue creating the mask. And then we just want to go back to black and refine this so that it matches up. All right, so that took me a little bit to do and just refine all the details. But now if we unplug the bottom, you can see that we have a nice clean mask. But you can see there's some spots. We can just take the black and then paint over that. And where we paint black, that's where the top texture shows. And the white shows the bottom. So now going back to object mode and doing Alt H to unhide everything. I'm just going to delete that camera real quick. Now that everything is properly masked, what you want to do for these materials, since it's hard to set this up in Unreal, it's just much simpler for me if we just condense it down in here so we don't have to have a bunch of nodes in Unreal Engine. Although you can do that, you just set up a similar thing and I can show you how to do that in Unreal Engine a little bit later. If you do want to do that, instead of learning how to bake the textures into one texture, what you do is just drag down from there, select this, click I, and then what you want to do is just save all of these. So you want to save the mask, do you save as, and then you want to save it somewhere to save. I'm just going to put it in the downloads folder. And then for the face, we didn't draw a mask, we use this, which we can do on Unreal, but it's much easier if we just condense this down in Blender. I'll show you how to do it with a mask for the leg though. But for this, we'll just condense it down to one. So to do that, take this Shift D to duplicate that and click the X and new. And then we just wanna call this the face color and untick alpha, click okay. 
And then with that selected and the head selected, you want to come up to the render settings, you want to go to cycles, it won't work in EV, so it needs to be in cycles. Come down to bake and then come down here to the bake type and we're baking a diffuse, also known as color, and we don't want to bake the direct and indirect lighting. We just want it to be the texture. So once you make sure that the texture, the mesh, and the settings are correct and selected, then you can hit bake. So now if you just drag into the base color, you can see it looks exactly the same. We can come up here and you see that we just baked the texture that we just made into one texture. So it just makes it much more simple. I'll just delete this because I don't need it anymore. And then coming back up here, you just want to save this. That's all for today's episode of the Mechabricks to Unreal Engine series. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. In the next episode, we'll be taking a look at doing some mesh cleanup. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.